Well, first of all, I think oil and gas exploration, including refinery uh, issues, are a national security component uh, of this country, and, that, and that's always been a top priority. One of our five top priorities of this office has been national security. It really is the fundamental uh, purpose of, of government in general. Uh, we purchase about $700 billion worth of petroleum from other countries every year. Some of that, unfortunately, finds its way into terrorist coffers. And I would suggest to you that terrorists wouldn't have enough money to buy a box of sparklers to hurt us if it weren't for the fact that we were buying so much Middle Eastern oil. So it's vital that we produce more of our own oil and also vital that we try to import any oil that we do from uh, more friendly nations. Uh, in terms of our refinery capacity, we haven't built a refinery here in 30 years. And uh, fortunately, those refineries have you know, honed their efficiency rates to a tremendous degree, and that's been why we are able to handle the additional uh, volume that we have. But we need to be able to, to have additional refinery capacity. We need to be able to produce our own energy, uh, not only for uh, economic reasons, but for national security reasons. You know, this president disappoints me on a very regular basis, but this was a, a heartbreaking disappointment that he would suggest uh, those pre-1967 borders. I mean, I think it was 19, June of 67 that those borders changed. Uh, but to put Israel in that position uh, is just an unthinkable thing. The, the reality is Israel cannot defend itself effectively under that scenario. Their, their airspace is... Uh, in, in, in jeopardize, they, they, they're, they're strategically on, on the ground forces basis completely minimized by that. They're even put in a position where uh, their, their groundwater could be in, invaded uh, by salt water from uh, their Palestinian uh, opponents uh, at their whim. The, the reality is that uh, this president has shown more disdain and has, has, has criticized Israel more for building houses in their capital city of Jerusalem than they have uh, criticized a madman like Ahmadinejad for building nuclear weapons to threaten the entire human family with. And now to put Israel in the untenable position of the borders that he suggested is just is kind of beyond my, my comprehension and my ability to articulate. It is a betrayal of Israel and it's really a betrayal of America's commitment to Israel, and it's to put Israel, our most vital ally in the Middle East, in an existential threat to circumstance. Well, it's an interesting question. The, 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 it is hard to know who's in charge and, and, and who he intends to, to try to direct money to or from next. Um, if there is anything that, uh, I suppose in two words, that uh, characterizes Mr. Obama's economic policy, it's been sort of chaotic socialism. Um, because the, the, we don't know uh, in the business world whether to jump or go blind. They just don't know what he's going to do next. And the uh, absolute unprecedented spending rate uh, is... I think, uh, again, a threat to our national security. It seems to me that this president uh, is lost uh, when it comes to any kind of economic understanding of, of productivity. Uh, he seems to be asleep at the wheel when it comes to our national security, and he seems to be willing to put people on the Supreme Court that have no respect for the Constitution. So, I mean, it's sort of a, you know, a multi-tiered uh, concern, but the, uh, the economic situation is pretty obvious, I think, to most people that this president is so far over his head and so dismissive of um, the time-honored, market-driven, private sector-generated productivity of this country that has made us the absolute envy of not only the world but of human history. Uh, and yet he's willing to discard it in a moment uh, in the name of redistrib you know, redistributing the wealth. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a bad sign, and I think that if we uh, don't change course on that, if we don't change presidents on that, uh, we're all, I'm, I'm afraid, going to consign our children to a very different world than we live in today.